Rajit is asking in the offline satsang you mentioned something happened to you after doing the kriyas is the tantric actually working on causal layers yes the shakti path actually alters not only your energy constitution it alters the causal body also there are various kinds of shakti paths like we say like the guru will say on the kriya path i am not into kriya or kundalini actually nowadays but whatever using my little knowledge and little interactions with these people who do this kind of work i know this much that the shakti path can happen at any layer so usually uh, a manipulation is done in the root chakra muladhar that is the basic shakti path or even above that the sexual center these two are you can say energized or they are accelerated a little bit because this creature is dead you see evolution is happening at a snail space we say 50 life times and still like an animal so the guru <laughs> does a little bit of manipulation there but it is possible to give a shakti path which is on the higher scale and the higher layers and then you can say that the alteration of the causal body is the highest kind of shakti path on the path of knowledge this is the normal thing <laughs> we enter your causal body through the intellect not through the physical layers not through the lower layers although sometimes it's as necessary to drop to the lower layers so what happens is there is a effect of this kind of energizing what is this energizing actually i should not reveal too much except there is a intention behind it tantric means the guru who is working on you means that he has a very strong intention plus help from the other side you see without the other side it's not going to happen like you can sit with a person and say i am going to give you shakti path try your best even if you have a strong intention probably there will be a little bit of effect but goes away in 10 minutes because there is no support from the other side and you can guess the other, the other side is always something in the guru field there is something so those who are in the tradition they can give the shakti path those who are allowed those who have the permission nobody else can give it so i have done this, some experiments and i have seen that if you sit with me and if you touch hands there is a transfer of energy if i make an intention i have done this kind of experiments you see believe me or not i am completely mad so it remains for mostly one or two days nothing more than that only some people are receptive those who are receptive only they get it not uh, everybody so you will find that the when you are doing the shakti path ritual and the guru says surrender to me the guru says be receptive be in the receiving pose receiving posture and the student sits below the guru with folded hands sometimes the student will lie down on the feet of the guru prostrate what does that mean i am surrendered this pose itself will put the mind into a surrendered pose a surrendered mode those who are doing simply the ritual you see they don't get anything it is a mental act not a physical act as yes, you can sit like a total devotee in front of the guru i love you guru ji but no that is different it the surrender must be just like a child surrenders to his mother it has to be a bond and the guru can sense it but never says it if you are faking it <laughs> because you get something you see the effect is not very big so if you are in surrender in the receiving posture this shakti path works this intention starts working and starts changing things accelerating things and the first thing it does is purification that is where the people drop off because it is too much too intense first nobody wants to see their dark side like you say in western traditions shadow work shadow work nobody wants to do that so what happened is when this was done i i received the purification did not like it at all but uh, because it is a mechanical kind of process there is no control of the creature you know already you don't have any control obviously these things happen so there is nobody to control anything so when this goes out of control 
there is suffering but there is cleaning like you are put into a washing machine but then when you come out you are fresh and you smell good isn't it out of the washing machine but while in the washing machine it's uh, uneasy <laughs> not comfortable so i said in the offline sessing that the lower layers were cleaned that was an advantage actually because when the lower is taken care of the higher can work without any noise and that uh, enables higher knowledge which we call path of knowledge that's why i send people back to yogic paths or other paths when i see no possibility in them too much impurity now they are attracted to the path of knowledge obviously for some reason but uh, they forget whatever is taught to them a little bit of purification is needed i say but still you know those who come here and th- those who persist we give them the causal shakti path yes i call it implantation of a seed seeding the knowledge this is my intention in that is present in all my talks all my videos all my writings they are written with a very strong intention that everybody gets the seed it is a kind of shakti path in terminology of kriya yogis kundalini people what does it do <laughs> those who are in the receiving pose their lives are completely changed completely amazing so that's why i say you see the paths may look different but essentially they work in the same way when you see this everything is crystal clear when i said in my kundalini series which is on the podcast that you cannot escape kundalini on the path of knowledge very clearly it is said only the levels are changed we do not disturb the muladhar or the swadishthan or emotional centers we do not do that the path of knowledge is so dry and boring intellectual logical rational we do not even touch them then why do we get all this activity why is there tremendous amount of emotion in you why is there love for guru why is there sexual attraction for the guru what happens to you <laughs> when you when my when my words the enter your ears what happens to you probably you will not know today you will know it after 5 or 6 years 10 years kundalini happens to you isn't it then i need to leave the path of knowledge and treat you on the energetic path i need to support you if you are very emotional if you are crying and i need to do all these things then like a child i need to take care of you and if i if i am surrounded by 200 people not possible so now you know why we keep people away from this path of knowledge a little bit don't want too many fortunately i don't need to do too much only there are few cases where i get involved in their lives and then it goes away you see the kundalini is not permanent i mean the effects are not permanent they go away so the tantric the guru or whatever you want to call that person who is manipulating your evolution works on many layers not only causal that is my experience we work on the layer of intellect that is your experience and no you are not free from kundalini it will manifest although you may not notice it even you see because you don't have that background so you will not notice it you will not be able to see the reasons of why things are happening to you so i have seen that those who come on the path of knowledge they don't have the lower issues at all most of the time there is very clear and there are one or two things one or two suppressed desires if they are brought out if they are expressed fine is then the only problem fine on the path of knowledge is the ignorance in the mind the mental layer is impure i mean the layer of intellect is impure and it is simply shown that look this is the impurity that's all is shown the showing itself clears it if you see it you are pure then we never worry about the natural process it is happening in background do not worry too much there are few cases where the manifest manifestation is immense what can i do there simply write it in the file and give it to the guru field send your file that's all i can do sometimes it is beyond human okay anand has a question how to be certain that uh, the present waking state is not the dream and while during sleep what we see as a dream is not real so let me tell you it is a dream is it but uh, it has more rules than the sleep dream 
this, the, the dream which happens in the night. So there are few ways to check the rules that are present in the, the physical laws that are present in the waking state are not there. I mean, I'm not saying they're not completely there. They are there, but not exactly like the waking state. This is huge uh, advantage if you want to know which state I am in. Otherwise, you'll never know. The lucid dream is so real that it is, there is a chance that you will get lost in that, you see. So what do we do? We do the reality check. It is called reality check in lucid terminology. We check when we are in the dream. We try to do simple experiments like we turn on the light. And the, if you are in the waking state, usually the light will turn on 99% of the time. Sometimes there is no power. Sometimes the light fails, you see, fused light or faulty light, but mostly it will turn on. When you turn on the tap, there will be water, mostly, you see. <laughs> we don't know what will happen, this is India, but uh, usually there is water. And in dream, uh, these things fail more often. I am not saying that in dream, if you turn on the light, it, there will be no light all the time. No, 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 there will be. You will need to check two or three things to make sure. So if you spin a top in the waking state, the top will come to a standstill. In dream, you don't know. Now you know to which movie I'm pointing to. A very, very famous example. There are, these are the reality checks. There, there is one thing which I've seen works all the time, which is you write down something on a paper, you read it and you look away. Look away for two or three seconds, then look back on the paper. Now the writing on the paper will change in a dream. Why? Because it is manifested on the spot. You see, drishti srishti. Perception is manifestation. So, and the, the dream intellect is obviously <laughs> imperfect. So it recreates the writing, but it cannot recreate it faithfully. Create something else. And then you can be sure that, oh, this is a dream. And this will never happen in the waking state, you see. Whatever you write on the paper will remain that. This was my reality check when I used to do that. So Anand got some tips, I think. In the waking state, you can check if I am in the waking state by doing this writing thing. Uh, or it is valid for many things, you see. You are drinking wine and the wine turns into, let us say, blood or milk. Then obviously it's not the waking state. And the problem here is in the dream that if the awareness is not intense, the intellect adapts to the change. The intellect sees nothing abnormal if the wine turns into milk. Oh, let's drink the milk then, <laughs> the intellect says. Like a baby, you see, the babies don't know what is happening really. Things keep changing in front of them. They simply keep ac accepting that, oh, this is how it is. They are hardly surprised by changing imagery. Because why? Because the intellect is very, very like a baby, immature. So you need to be aware, you need to be present. Then you will notice the, the odd things in the dream. And then you will come to know this is, the, is a dream. Otherwise, we are lost in the drama.